And hello, welcome to Pass the Remote, the TV show podcast for CBC. Of course, I am Joe. Find me on Twitter at Halftime Joe. And over there, on the other side of the mic, it is Mitch. You can find him on Twitter at Mitch692. Now, it's really the shortest show we're ever going to have, most likely. Um, we, I know we always say that and joke about that, and, and then we'll go on for an hour and a half, but this is probably what's going to be the shortest show. Uh, mostly because there is no news. If there is, it's kind of just like hearsay. It's like, uh, I don't think y'all would really care to listen about just some, maybe a set photo of Jessica Jones where they're practicing. It's like, they're not, we don't even know what they're practicing about. It's just them having fun on set. You know, it's just one of those things. Well, we know what they're practicing about. No, I don't. I don't see. The Hellcat stuff. Oh, well, there's, okay, there. That's kind of it. That's just like, we knew, we knew Hellcat was coming. Yeah. Um, of course, if you want to find CBC on social media, you can Google us. You'll find a Twitter, Instagram, everything, uh, Facebook, uh, SoundCloud, anything really. You just Google Comic Book Cast, and you'll be able to find everything. Um, so you can check us out on all the various social medias. Of course, as I said, follow us on Twitter as well. But with that, we are pretty much just going to get into it, straight into it, by talking about the last two episodes of Cloak and Dagger, mostly because there was no new My Hero Academia. Um, there's really no other show out right now besides Cloak and Dagger that we're going to be talking about. And even then, we, this last week, mostly because of me, I didn't, I didn't watch it in time. So we're kind of going to recap, plus also talk to one that it was recently. So... Let's get into it. Cloak and Dagger Season 1, Episode 5 and 6. Yes, this is more of a two thing. But, Mitch, how'd you feel about the last two episodes? I'm really enjoying it. I like it. Yeah. Um, there's. I think Episode 6 is was really making, like, you can see, especially the part with the with the voodoo lady like that made me think oh wow there's like something bigger at play here like we've always kind of thought that because of the divine pairing and stuff like that and you kind of hear it here and there they've been teasing it but they dedicated i would say about half an episode to basically this whole voodoo thing and the divine pairing and kind of how it's been around new orleans or new orleans i think they say at one point i'm not entirely sure i think they said new orleans though that's kind of the thing that's going to lift it up for me because I love, like, voodoo type of stuff. I think that's interesting. I don't know why. Uh, I mean, it's an interesting concept, isn't it? It's just something slightly different. But it also goes to show that there is, you know, maybe... I don't know how you feel about this with the whole kind of destiny thing and how maybe these two didn't just become who they are by random. Maybe it was destiny in a way that led them there. I don't I always thought you don't necessarily like the chosen one, right? Is it my right on that? I mean, it depends. It depends how they write that. it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think like they always, they always kind of came together through circumstance. It was never really random from what I remember. Anyway, it was never like really like, Oh, but so, well, what do you mean? It was never really like a Destiny thing. It was always kind of just random. But with the show, they're making it a more Destiny thing. Is that what you're saying? But I mean, random and Destiny are kind of synonyms, aren't they? Like... Mm, is it? I don't know. Like if if it, if it, if it, it happens randomly to you, but I guess it I guess it depends on how they write. It depends on how they write it, though, because if they're not talking about like the divine parent and everything like that, then maybe it's just like random but it, since they're talking about the divine parent it's supposed to mean there's probably some like bigger thing going on you know it just depends on how they surround yeah, but, the characters no you know you can just pluck two you know in the comics you just pluck two random people up and you experiment on them like yeah it was gonna be those two that was just their destiny it was always well that's the like okay so uh, so to to kind of bring on something to uh, c- compare it. Let's say, for example, uh, Star Wars, right? Where you have Luke, who he's the chosen one in a sense or whatever. But then you also have Rey, who they went away from that, in which I uh, am intrigued by that, where they don't make her a chosen one or destiny, and it's kind of just like out of random that she's able to do this. You know, that she was picked to I, save that. I, I, I Is that you... considered destiny? Because they're not, like, th- that movie actually goes out of its way to say, this is not destiny. This is her making her own. Th- like it's free will in a way. I I don't think it is. You think? Oh, you think everything is destiny then in a way? No, I, I'm saying for Ray. I don't think that's free will. 
You think it is still destiny on her part? Yeah. Okay, well, so then with this one, even if there wasn't no divine parent voodoo lady, you would still think there's maybe a destiny thing to play? Yeah. Okay. Because to me, it always comes off of either one or the other. It depends on how they play it in the show. If they want to go the more, like, if they talk about destiny and stuff like that, then, of course, they're probably is going to be something to say that they were always meant to be there. But if they don't go that way, then it is maybe of the whole free will thing. And it's always just how the showrunners play around with it, how they surround the show with this thing. And clearly it is going the more destiny thing, which I like personally. I do love the chosen one or the destiny thing and stuff like that, where um, maybe Peter Parker wasn't randomly just hit by a spider. He was like the spider was made for him or something like that. You know, maybe he was always meant to be Spider-Man. I, I like that kind of thing. So, I don't know about you. Um, I'm tr- No, if I try to think of that, I'd be here forever. What? I was just trying to think of if Parker's ever been, like, outside of the Tasm movies. If it's ever been, like, preordained. Probably not, but I've always personally thought, like, you know, there is a destiny to play. So, that's just kind of my own thing goes into the movies and shows for me yeah. into the story. I mean it depends on your if you believe in it, it depends on your True. perspective. True. No, you know. You can say, Oh yeah, they're they were gonna be there. You can go, well no, you just randomly happen to be those two. No, it's not it's kinda of the same thing no matter what way you look at it. And I think it is interesting that the the, the girl that Tyrone is kind of falling in love with is going to probably have to stay away in a terms of relationship, Ray, because she has to be, like, the the one to help the divine pairing, in a sense. Yeah. And I, I mean, yeah. I'm, I, I can see her being the one that dies. I can see it being a curveball, and she's the one that has to die. Oh, so one of them has to die, but instead of Tyrone or Tandy, it's going to be the little girlfriend, right? Somebody just yeah. has to die when at that moment. Yeah, because do, do they ever specify? They say, "Well, oh, no, they say one live, one die." They don't really talk about who the other, like, oh, I, I, I figure, um, ties one of the two, the one live, one die, because he has the little three D print out of it. Yeah, and they just like, the only they, reason they, there's not another one is because they don't know, they didn't know there was a, another divine pairing. They just thought there's something weird with Tyrone. I mean, I, I assume they know that there's a, a, a second one now to make the pair. Yes. Now they know. But, um, yeah, it's kind of like, I wonder if the reason that it hasn't been printed yet is because it's not necessarily Tandy. And it is going to be, I can't think of a name, I might be giving it an E. I thought the only reason it wasn't printed was because they haven't really met her yet. But that doesn't matter they didn't meet ty and yet the 3d printer was printing the middle of him i thought the 3d printer was after they met him no sure i i know they were doing it like they were trying to splice it in within that episode they don't have to no but i i I know in the episode they were trying to splice it in and how it started in the beginning a little bit in the middle and then you realize at the end it's ty or whatever you're wondering what it is throughout the whole episode that could always be the thing that they that was after they just did the whole thing like no no I mean, I, I, you know, the the way they're talking about, like, you see in the future the tarot cards and all this, like, pretty certain that was meant to be taken. That but they were printing that before they knew. If it. it if it isn't handy, and it is maybe the the girlfriend or one uh then why not just another one? Why is it only just one? Like that's the weird part. I don't know. I don't know how voodoo works. See, I <laughs> that's the only reason why I thought there was just one was because it was after Tyrone and. Um, I mean, I might have to go through that episode again, but I swear it really felt like it was after um, they had met him, and they just spliced it in within, like, the episode to make it, like, a tease. Um, But other than that, I do enjoy that they're finally using their powers, like, in a sense of they're okay with it, especially Tyrone, because he's the one who's not necessarily okay with it. He's a little bit of a Boy Scout, but then he gets that edge little by little. Yeah, her name's Evita. Evita, okay. I, I I honestly don't recall them saying her name at any moment. Oh, no, they, they said her name a fair few times. I, sh- I did not, re- I don't even remember that, but yeah, I... Literally, in the newest episode, the grandma addressed her as Evita. Damn, I just, it just went past me then. I honestly just did not, like, grip onto it that her name was Evita, but uh, there it is. And I don't know, how do you feel about that? 
now they're using their powers. And it's almost, it doesn't feel rushed because, I mean, they did say the quickest way was to just that life or death situation, which is the fight or flight response type of thing, right? Yeah. It doesn't feel rushed, but it just seems maybe he was okay with it too quick or no. Nah. I, I don't know. It was no, just one I, episode I, after. It was really. I didn't get that. Okay, you're gonna have to explain to me a little bit about the end of episode five, where, like, he, of course, he gives up the game, and I already knew he was gonna give up the game because of how he took the shot. I was like, that's clearly a miss. Um, but he was seeing everybody's fears, and then he was he wanted to give the other team like, like not to get into their like he wanted them to win because they were gonna be safe if they won. Is that what it is? Um, I can't remember that scene exactly, to be honest. So the whole, the, the scene goes by like where he returns and he plays basketball, which I want to say he just got dressed in water. He returns, he transports back to the locker room. He's like, let's I, get the towel and dap it up. Right. Yeah, let yeah. me, let me dap yeah, it I, up real quick. <laughs> I laughed at that. I was like, that is one fuck of a towel. <laughs> yeah. Like, can I have that towel, please? Because that would work well. Great thing. towel. But he goes back, he's, got, he's dribbling the ball at the court and people are touching him. Basically, hand checking, which is illegal nowadays in basketball. So I don't know why they're doing that. Um, but he sees. Well, no, he wasn't doing it with his hands. It was. It was just they were like... touching him. Yeah, it was just. Well, I mean, like it was just. Yeah, but then like... he saw their fears, and then he kind of just gave up the game. He didn't just take the shot to try to win it. He literally gave it up. You could easily tell what by was, that shot. What was the last thing he saw? He just was kept seeing a get... bunch, a bunch of them get what... beat up and stuff like that. But was it was it the last one where he? held the doors closed no that's in episode six that's no. with the kid with the drugs who's like uh the kid like he's about to like take the backpack back and then tyrone's like you know what you're not taking this back i need to do this oh no you're right yeah, yeah. oh god got mixed up yeah um i just don't re- i just don't necessarily understand the the end of episode five where he sees everybody's fears and it's like you know what i i don't need to win this they, they need to win this more than i do I guess that's maybe what it is, and to me, it doesn't make I, sense. I don't, I don't remember feeling like that. I just think he genuinely missed, but I thought he missed it on purpose because just the way he stood. No. The funniest thing to me, God, oh my God, was he stood there at the top of the key, which is the three point line. He, uh, he, he sees the time. It go, it takes a a quick shot of the clock going down. It looks like it goes two one point five, and then he's still there for another thirty seconds. Yeah, I, I know. It's sad. It's just like, really? That's so, you shouldn't yeah. have showed the time. That made it worse. And then yeah. he goes for the shot. He look like easily looked like he's like, I'm just gonna miss this real quick. Because if he was trying to make people feel better, the ref was the one where they were like torturing him if they didn't let his team win. So yeah. it's, so it's yeah. like you're just literally no one wins in this situation. You make the other team win, the ref loses. You make the ref win and your team win, the other team loses. It's like, it's just win it. I don't see why well, you should have lost it. I mean... Because uh, I... it, it didn't really add too much to the story. Like, if he would have lost and then that the, the friend of the brother said, you know what, because you lost and, like, you're feeling down, I'll give you a job, like, that would have made sense. But that, that loss had no significance to the story. In my opinion, other than maybe him being okay with his powers, maybe I'm not even entirely well, sure that was. Have, does it have to have a significant part of the story? I thought it will have significant. Well, they made a whole episode about it. I'd assume it would have. Yeah, they like, should have done it's, something it's to the story. It's to develop the tie, isn't it? But see, I I don't even think it was that that made him be okay with the powers. It felt like it was Tandy who made him be okay with the powers, and that so that last like him seeing the fears. Like I don't. Yeah, he, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, but it didn't help anybody. It just felt so weird on why... No, it, it, it clearly, you said that, you know, they were all getting beaten. It's clearly helped them get beaten. Yeah, but then he just, get beaten. he's basically about to get the ref, like the ref's about to get tortured to death, basically. He's killing yeah, somebody the, else. I mean, it's like a dick anyway, so what's the point? It, it to, I mean, the only reason the ref was a dick was because he was being tortured to make Tyrone's team win. So it's like one of those things... It, no, he wasn't because the ref was going against Ty. No, the ref was going for him because he literally caught a foul on the other team when there was no foul, and he made Ty get more points. I don't. See, I, I need to watch the episode again. Yeah, because it's just one of those things where, to me, that's the only problem I've had with this uh, season. I think overall it's been a really great season, but that's just the only part I don't get what it had to do. Why couldn't he have won it? What? There's nothing to say, like, nothing that advances the story of him losing it. Like, 
if him if he would have won it, it would have maybe could have had something else. But I, there's nothing for him to lose it. I just don't get it. It didn't even help with like him being okay with his powers. Tandy was the one saying like, "You should be okay with your powers and stuff like that. Use it to your advantage and such." And mm. I thought he was. I thought that would have made sense because that whole episode was Tandy basically letting Tyrone say it's okay to use your powers for an advantage. And Tyrone was using it for a little bit, right? Where they were touching him and he was seeing their fears and then they were getting Yeah, but that's not like necessarily him using it, you know, because no, it no. kind of happens but, anyway. But the whole thing was at the end of that episode, right? He, he like, the powers happen and they start getting, like, dizzy and he gets out, they get out of his way. So basically, it would have made it easier for him to win if everybody just kept touching him. But for some reason, he just decided to miss the shot. I just don't get it. That's the only... I don't know why I'm stuck on it. I think it's just because there's no reason why he should have lost. I think it would have made more sense if he would have won because his brother didn't win it. And he would, if he would have won it, he, he would have done it for his brother, you know? Yeah, I'm, I feel like you're missing something and I can't remember I feel like I'm missing something too because I, I saw it. I just didn't understand it, why he lost. There was like literally no reason for him to lose. Yeah, it's got to be something. But I, I don't know if I'm putting... If I remember. I'm maybe putting... I will get off of it right now. Maybe putting more on it than it's supposed to be. But still, at the same time, it's just so random why he lost. Would have made more sense if he won. But okay, going more to episode six. Um, I I enjoy kind of... It was... Uh, it feels like there's more Tandy. And that's maybe because um, I liked her part more. In sense of like she was with... Uh, what, the in daughter. episode six? Yeah. That was a lot more Tandy. Yeah, okay I, okay, I thought it was just me. But yeah, there was um, a lot of Tandy and her kind of being in disguise and uh, just trying to get close to the to the daughter and whatnot. And I guess she realizes that the daughter is actually a good person? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm really talking a lot about this. You, you, you don't have any moments? I mean, this was probably... Your least favorite, right? Yeah, because it was just, it felt really preachy, and it felt oddly preachy. Like, what do bees have to do with this show? Like, I couldn't really understand what they were doing. What do you mean? Oh, bees? Well, it's the whole, like, it's the whole thing they're going for. It's just, like, I understand what Tandy was trying to do, but they focus so much more on other stuff. And it's like, we don't, you know, let's not, like, can we just focus on the characters and not, like, everything See, else? To me... But, the beating, I, I remember only one point where the beating was, and that was at the very end where the daughter, like, I forget her name. It was, the, it was the entire reason why that woman was there, and they focused on it so much. I, I they literally had, like, a half-hour conversation just walking through this, like, pond. If 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 I'm reading into too much, somebody to tell me, um, in a metaphorical sense, and maybe thematically, it could mean, you know, with bees, it seems like the only reason they're evil or bad is because you attacked them first. And it also goes to what Tandy has been doing this whole time and attacking people oh, first. Fair. And fair. with the daughter, yeah. she wasn't, you, you, she couldn't tell, Tandy couldn't tell if she was a good person or a bad person until she realized not to use her powers. And then like, okay, maybe I shouldn't like, I should do this another route. And then with the whole beating, you didn't attack the bee, just let it go free. You know, it was one of those things no, where- that's, that's fair, that's fair. It seemed like- yes. I, I, I may be reading it too, but that's, I feel well, like, no, it, 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 it actually, sense. yeah, that, that's kind of changed me on, her, on it a little bit. So. Um, yeah. The Tyrone thing was cool in the sense that he finally is like, hey, I'm going to get out there and stuff like that. Like, he's two episodes behind Tandy, basically. I mean, he's a long way behind Tandy. Tandy's out from the start. Yeah, and eventually you, could, you can already tell how it's going to kind of coincide and stuff like that and how they eventually, um, Gonna gonna be on their own tracks, but at the very end, it's somehow gonna have uh, the same thing. And look, you're right. This might have been a little bit the weakest episode, but I it I did enjoy it because like I mean, I enjoyed it. I it was had more of like, the cop, why right? am I, I was just like, why am I here listening to talk about bees? Like it's not what a cloak and dagger show is, but and it, it makes it, sense now. No. It did also have more of the the cop O'Reilly and um, trying to. I guess get into and take down uh, that cop that Tyrone and then they kill his friend and, you know what I think the strangest things to me was the fact that when other people see Tyrone use his powers 
it's the black smoke isn't there. It's just like literally in and out. It's pop in, pop out. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the interesting to me. So I guess nobody. But else then no can one, see... no one seems to see the light. Tandy emits. So... so I guess that means no one. Like if she were to have it in her hand, no one would be able to see it. Probably right. No, yeah, because just, yeah. the dude that went to rape her that she stabbed clearly saw it. He saw it? You think so? Oh, I mean, he looked... He, I, I don't know. He, he must have seen it because there was blood in it. Uh, I don't know. It, it'll, it'll be odd if no one could see it. It would be, but at the same time, maybe it's only them two who can see, like, there's the black smoke and the light. Like, maybe no, it's only that, that would be that would be really Too weird. Too convenient? I, I, that's, no, it's just a really strange, great decision. Like, no one can see our powers. Well, then... Well, that, that's... Because when, when we see the dirty cop, like, watch Tyrone flee, and he's shooting him, and every time he's about to get, yeah, like, hit... Yeah, but you don't... There's no... There's none of the smoke on Ty when he vanishes. Well, there is a little bit at first, but then that's when it's a, on his perspective. But then when you look at... Dirty cost perspective, it's just like in and out, in and out, pop in, pop out. There's no like smoke around them. So it was just weird. It, it would be a weird creative decision if nobody else can see their powers, like the smoke and the light. Mm. But I mean, to be fair, the distance the cop was to Ty, if Ty did have any, it wasn't a lot, so you probably wouldn't notice anyway. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense. No, it's not like he, he bamps like Nightcrawler and it's just. A cloud oh, of mist. yeah, yeah, that because that's almost initially what I thought was gonna happen, but I'm kind of glad it isn't because uh, maybe it's too much <clears throat> to basically yeah. make him Nightcrawler. But um, I mean, to, in a yeah, to but I, I, kind of I feel like there's maybe more to his powers because, like, sure he can teleport, but and he can see. Well, there's people... a lot more to his powers, but they, obviously they've got to develop those powers. It's true, and I'm sure in season two you'll see more of it. Right now they're just getting used to like. I mean, I'm sure by the end of the season we'll see more of it. Technically, you know, we've already he's... seen two powers. Technically, he still can't even teleport on his own, right? Like, the only reason he was teleporting was because he was getting shot at. And it's kind of like a, an instinct that it does it on its own when you're about I mean, to die. I that, mean, that's just the fight or flight instinct he's yeah. kicking, isn't it? Yeah, so basically it's But then not... at the same time, they yeah. they do the thing... Was it episode five? Yeah, episode five. Where their powers are clearly linked. So if she uses hers, his go off. I Which is a really strange... I think that's cool, though. I think that's, like... It makes more to the whole... Uh, the divine pairing thing if... But I don't know how I feel about it. Because it's weird. Like, yes, their powers are linked anyway. But to that extent, I don't know. It's a little weird, yeah. Because then that's, that's just going, oh, we have to be... Like, you're forcing them together even more. Which, I suppose, is kind of the entire point. But... Wow. I don't For... know, it's just a weird... Fun fact, the, the lady who plays the, the cop, O'Reilly, was actually the Yellow Ranger in Power Rangers Dino Thunder. I didn't know that. Yeah. I did not know that after this whole time. What, is she, what else has she been in? Uh, Hellcats, I... the Tom Welling show. Never heard of it. And, I mean, it was just about like cheerleaders or something. He For some reason, he wanted to make a show about cheerleaders, but all right. Haven, never heard of, never really watched that. Nope. That makes sense. There was something about, like... No, that's not it. Um, but, yeah, like... I assume... Tandy is gonna get the daughter... Uh, into all this. Uh, Mina, her name. She's gonna, like, give the information. I assume so. Yeah, yeah, it just makes sense because of how Mina is such a... Like, goody two-shoe. And even to that one extent when she was talking to the suit. Like, you're cutting corners now, huh? Like, you could tell, like, she's really... Just all about doing good and no sense of evil in her. And that she was lied to. Because her dad, yeah, the yeah. only reason he's like that is because of Roxanne. So it's like, eventually she's going to let him know. Yeah, also, like, what are they dreading for? Because I've got no clue. Yeah, I had no idea what that energy was they're talking about. I was like, what? It's like, oh, it, it burns ten times hotter than oil. Just like, okay. <laughs> um... Anything else about this? The last two episodes, or maybe just the first half of the season? Like, like I said, we don't really have anything else to talk about but this, and we're probably not gonna go for an hour talking about this. No, um, I don't know. I kind of want them, not necessarily to get on with it, because I've been, I've enjoyed what they've done. Yeah. So far, it's just like, can we? Oh, maybe... speed it up a bit. Just a, just slightly, you know, we're over the halfway point now, and we still really don't know a lot. Like, yes, it's just more about these two, but, like, can we... 
like learn like what is Roxxon doing? Like can we learn a bit more about that? Uh, I don't I don't want to find out and then see them stop it in the same episode. No. This, I, this feels like it's gonna end in a way where the dirty cop is also works for Roxxon and something. That's how they're gonna meet back because they all work in their own kind of uh, mysteries, right? They're solving their own cases like. Uh, Tyrone with the dirty cop who shot his brother and they made it disappear so he wants him to pay um, of course Tandy with her dad and Roxxon the main manager guy uh, was okay with everything and I, initially I don't know why I thought at first like oh he might actually be a changed guy and then when you see his hope is basically taking people uh, taking money from people's dead bodies god yeah that was fucked dude I just was that like was I, wow I wow that was crazy to me, man. I honestly, just that visual was crazy to me. They're really good with that stuff, though. Yeah, with these hopes yeah. and fears, it's, they really shine at that point. I, I agree. It's um. Also, the Ty's brother's friend is a nubhead. Oh, in what like, way? Fuck that guy. Which is a dickhead. Well, yeah, well, yeah. He let his brother, he let his best friend die. I don't know why. I guess for survival. You know, it's, it's messed up, bro. It's just like it's like fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, you basically. I don't know what difference would it make? It's like that's not the point. A lot of difference, actually. <laughs> you could have stopped the cop. Yeah, you could have. Made I hate that money. mindset. It's like, well, what difference would it make? It's like, well, I get are it. You dumb. It's survival, yeah. right? It's survival. No. You, you're not supposed yeah, to hold how, any how attachments. Is, but how is it survival when he's still out there? So the likelihood of you being shot is still high. Well, I guess it's because he it doesn't has. Make sense. He has like blackmail on the dirty cop, and he can use it whenever. But he's using it in a sense to get himself more money with this whole drug business. I kind of get it, it, it no, but at the same no. time, it's not the right thing to do. It, but of course, he's not a good person in any sense of the word. So it's fucked up. He, he's really like a bad guy who just let his best friend die. He didn't let his little brother believe that his, his brother died alone and stuff like that. That's crazy. I don't know. I. Just kind of get down with it. But I, I get that that mindset in a way. It's just survival, man. No attachments. Even though he has attachments, he likes the little brother, which is weird. I mean, clearly not. <laughs> he doesn't, can't True. really think much of him with that mindset. But... I guess you're right. He doesn't really, I think he's just like cool that he's there, but it's like, if it comes down to it, it's you or me, you're, I'm I'm surviving. Yeah. You, know? you know, he's only there because of his brother. You know, well, he's dead. You That's know, literally it. One thing I want to, last thing I want to say about the show is that I, with the whole voodoo thing especially, I just, if you're from New Orleans and you and you love this show, man, this must be a godsend because they're really putting New Orleans on, not a pedestal, but they're like, they're making it out to be this big they're thing. Giving, they're giving New Orleans like this little moment. Yeah, it's a, like, like the, the city is its own thing. It's alive. And we've always talked about this. When you go street level, you got to make the city alive wherever they are. New York with homecoming. Um, of course, uh, New Orleans here, and it's just one of those things where the city matters here, especially with this whole voodoo thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but cool. I think that's probably, like, you know, we, we. I think by now we should have had a, like a reveal of like something to do with the voodoo or rock zone. Now you know, like half of that mid season, you always have something big. Yeah. And it's like we haven't had that yet. Oh, I agree with you. Yeah. Like not not necessarily a bad thing, but at the same time, I think it's probably just me being like so used to having that like structure of a show, and we haven't had it yet. No, I, I get what you mean. for next week, but I, I definitely get what you mean on that. Um, it's you're right in the sense that maybe it's like an episode or two behind, and maybe this episode should have been one where there sh there would have been more of a review and stuff like that. Since there are only four episodes left, it feels very weird mm. that we. Still don't know a lot of it. You're right, um, but I'm, I mean, I, think so I both... assume from this point now it is all just going to ramp up because yeah. you've only got four episodes left. I, I agree too, but I think we're still both on season one. I think I personally like this more than Runaways. Like if we were to compare, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I enjoy just, this way like, more. Just than the Runaways. fact that it's a good cloak and dagger show alone makes it far better. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, oh yeah, well, I wanted to ask. Uh, did you initially think that was Tandy and Tyrone in the beginning for some reason? Like. In the beginning, yeah, remember when there was a black guy with a black a shirt and a, a a woman blonde with a white hoodie, and like it could have been them, maybe like a future sense, and then it it panned out, and it was actually Tyrone's brother's friend and his girlfriend. Oh no, I don't remember that bit. So. It was at the very beginning, and like the the showrunner talked about it, and was just like, yeah, that's kind of a tease, I guess, about for them. Um, for Tyrone and Tandy because it looked like it was supposed to be them and then you kind of 
pan out and it's like, oh, well, it's not them. So it's still a, like, no, she's That's not white. Cool. I don't think she's white. I, think she's yeah, white I, I don't even cool. remember seeing yeah. anything like that. So. <laughs> yeah. And I'm behind on watching the um, little, oh, what's his name? Joe something. Oh. The guy, the guy does the interviews like that. Because I assume Joe you're Hill? watching the, I'm sure you're watching the uh, Nerdist thing after. No, uh, there's a Nerdist thing after? Yeah, Marvel and the Nerdist are doing something together, and they have like little after interview talk. Thing. After it airs, yeah, yeah. Oh, I watch it on Hulu. I don't think it it shows it on there, to be honest. Ah, oh, it's just a Marvel YouTube yeah. channel. Oh no, I I'm not watching that. I just saw it like on an article about the showrunner saying that that's a tease or something. So, yeah. yeah. Um, any last thoughts? Um, went on for a good thirty no. minutes. I'm sad that I saw a video earlier with um, Olivia Holt saying that Tandy isn't going to wear the suit. Ah, so. oh, and Rip. is Tyrone Rip. not going to wear the cape? Like, he literally has well, it. Well, I mean, Ty, is, he's got the... I think his next episode, he's going to yeah. have it properly. That's the other thing I'm kind of like, uh, about is that they're not going back to that episode three or four where was a, with the secret society thing. I yeah. hope it's the next episode. Um, because it, it made a lot of sense, and it could actually help out Ty in terms of him being more accustomed to his powers and catching up to Tandy, but I... I, say, I, I don't mind that they're taking a couple of us away from that. To, like, you know, they've had to do other things. True. But I, I, I hope... think it's definitely... I'm certain the preview for next episode is just him with, like, the cloak and the hood, and it's, like, the blue with the black, and then the black's, like, highlighted by grey or something. Yeah. It looks really nice. But it's kind of a shame that she's not going to have something herself, but maybe season two, they can figure it out. Yeah. Because... No, there's always the 1610 suit. That's not like a strange, like, gravity defying boob window. But... <laughs> yeah. Because God knows how that suit stayed on. So. All right. Well, with that, that will be it for today. Uh, we really just talked about the last two episodes of Clog and Nagger. No news, really. Because yeah. really scraping the uh, the bottom of the barrel, but I don't think that was personally worth it. He didn't even was... attempt to scrape the bottom. Yeah, I didn't, I, don't, I don't think they would have <laughs> liked it, to be honest. Like, there's really nothing really nothing like you... i mean it doesn't it doesn't help that there's not really conversation in anything it's yeah. just oh that's cool oh, like there's cool. maybe a walking dead poster but you don't like the walking dead i don't want to bring that up because i don't even watch the like last season so it's one of those things um yeah of course uh, we'll be back uh you know for the other shows uh book the ticket the film show and of course off the pace the comic show and and the main show yeah and the main show and I'm trying to think of everything like <laughs> The, I'm trying to think of everything we have left. Uh, no, I think that's it. All right. Until next time. Toodles.